Why prayer is so effective in fishing. Growing up as a boy, we went fishing a lot because I liked it. Even though we lived and fished in a great area in southwest Louisiana, I was often frustrated because we didn't catch many fish. The time or two we did catch big fish were very memorable because they were so exciting and rare. We expressed our angst with phrases like drowning worms and should have been here yesterday. Many times, while sitting in the boat, wishing for some fishing action, my dad would offer the advice, you're not holding your mouth right, which I took to mean that there was really nothing else of significance we could do since we were already doing all that we knew. In college, I became a man of faith through the power of God's word transforming my life. I'd given up fishing due to the practical realities of moving far from favorite locations and being busy with work and school. As my various experiences became a laboratory for my faith, I experienced God's power in answered prayer as related to my academic and scientific pursuits and my desires to see others also transformed by the power of the Messiah's blood through the ministries of God's Word. When I completed my PhD in physics, I became a farmer and then I experienced the exercise of scriptural faith and prayer in my exercise of authority over the earth to overcome the thorns and thistles and pests to bring forth crops and food through farming and hunting. When I returned to fishing, it only made sense as an exercise of my faith to pray for success, since the same scriptures which had imparted such faith for my scientific work, farming and hunting, actually say a lot more about fish and fishing. My hope in this video is for scripture to impart faith to you to pray and receive God's blessing on your fishing. And having grown in your trust in God's power and answered prayer for a relatively small thing, you might also be emboldened to approach the throne of grace regarding more important things. Any good biblical theology begins in Genesis. In this case, the first chapters of Genesis demonstrate God's work in creation of the seas and the swarms of living creatures in the seas, as well as God's creation of mankind and God's giving mankind authority over the other living things he created, including the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves and with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its, its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created them. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Things were going pretty well, and man's life and work on the earth would have been much easier had it not been for Adam's choice to disobey God as described in Genesis 3. Difficulty in work, thorns and thistles, were added as a consequence for Adam's sin, but these are better viewed as redemptive disciplines intended to turn man's heart back to God in prayer rather than vengeful punishment. After the flood, God purposed to reestablish mankind through Noah. So he repeated some of the aspects of the blessing and command to be fruitful and multiply. But in addition to permitting the green plants as food, God announces his permission to allow mankind to eat most of the animals. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, 
and fill the earth. The fear of you and dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens and upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. I wish I had been more aware of this. As a boy, I certainly could have made use of the knowledge that into your hand they are delivered. And that hunting and fishing for food had God's explicit permission, blessing, and approval. I didn't feel that way at the time, and in my early teen years when an attractive young lady expressed an animal rights philosophy, I gave up hunting and fishing for many years until I gained a biblical perspective. Chasing girls seemed like more fun. It's an unfortunate consequence of evolutionary thinking that puts mankind among the animals rather than created in the, rather than created in the image of God to rule over the animals and among the eternal beings with a soul and a spirit. When we think of ourselves as nothing more than animals, it's easier to act like animals, chasing after all kinds of debauchery and sin. King David, writing with the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, describes mankind in agreement with the Genesis account. Speaking of creation and man's place in it, David writes, When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? You have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the seas, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. I recall Early in my deer hunting experience, praying for deer and being so delightfully surprised with God's consistent answers. My prayer of faith in those days was based on the revelation of Psalm 50, where God says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. I figured that since the deer belonged to God, my hunting efforts would go better if I prayed consistently for God to share his cattle with me. It was a natural transition when I later returned to fishing for, to pray for God to share his bull redfish and drum with my family. Even though I grew up in Louisiana, I didn't catch my first redfish until I returned as a man of faith many years later and prayed for fishing success in the name of our Messiah. But the floodgates are open now and we've caught hundreds of them. Some people of faith read the Old Testament and are troubled by Louisiana's love for seafood that would have been considered unclean for ancient Israel. Notwithstanding that the commands for clean and unclean food never applied to the Gentiles anyway, and that all the animals were, pretend, were permitted for the descendants of Noah, their consciences were troubled. However, Mark 7.19 records the Messiah explicitly declaring all foods clean, allowing people of faith to eat seafood without fins and scales, including shrimp, oysters, crawfish, etc. So go ahead and prayerfully throw that net on the other side of the boat and eat your shrimp, crabs, crawfish with a clear conscience. But take note of our Lord's warning about what comes out of a man defiling him. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. So let's not be envious of our neighbor's boat, his fishing success, his wife, his job, or anything else. We should rejoice with our neighbor's successes and blessings, and we should mourn when our neighbor has loss. It may be hard to believe the level of authority God has over the fish and that divine fiat can bring success. Yet the Messiah was able to instruct Peter not only to cast a hook into the sea, but to use the coin in the mouth of the first fish he caught and pay their taxes. 
However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. It's Matthew 17, 27. It's notable that fish are an important part of several of the Messiah's miracles of provision during his earthly ministry, and also that they are specifically discussed as an object of prayer. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. For which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent? If you then know, if you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? properly understand the Lord's Prayer to give us today our daily bread as submitting all our physical needs to the Lord in prayer and we are emboldened to ask for fish also. And while I recognize God's miraculous hand at work, there are many times when answered prayer is worked out more as a process. God didn't just drop down miraculous answers to every challenge I encountered as a scientist. Rather, through hard work, and listening to my teachers, I grew in my abilities over time. When I was a farmer, God was very faithful in directly answering prayers for rain, as scripture promises, but there were many aspects of handling the thorns and thistles of farming that I had to pray for wisdom and exercise perseverance to overcome. Skill and wisdom in hunting came more quickly for me than it did in science or farming. Perhaps this was because I was quicker to pray and because there was genuine need for quicker success. There is rarely a lack of advice when tackling a new endeavor like majoring in physics, becoming a farmer, taking up hunting, or trying to improve in one's fishing. The challenge is to pray for wisdom and separate the wheat from the chaff among the different voices and to keep asking listen to spoke. Men with New Testament faith should also recognize that the good commission to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, of Genesis takes on less importance than the great commission to make disciples of all nations that Jesus tells us of in Matthew 28. The Messiah grew his disciples and transformed them from being fishers of fish with hooks and nets to being fishers of men skilled in the powerful use of God's word for a more eternal task. But Jesus kept circling back to fish and fishing to demonstrate his authority over the whole created world, to meet his followers' needs, and even to prove the physical reality of his resurrected body. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any bread? They answered him, no. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the great quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and he threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal, charcoal firing place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although they were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, so also with the fish. Now this was the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. These scriptures establish firmly that our resurrected Lord has a strong inclination to provide fish for his children. 
the disciples exercised faith by obeying the instruction to cast the net on the right side of the boat. We can exercise faith by obeying God's instruction to pray. In hindsight, perhaps God's message in my father's expression, you're not holding your mouth right, was that we had not exercised our authority by praying for success. James 4.1 reminds us that we often do not have because we do not ask. I often ask my children before we set on a I often ask my children before we set out on a fishing trip if they want to pray or if they want this trip to serve as the scientific control group regarding the effectiveness of prayer. They've seen the results of forgetting to pray enough times that they are not too interested in making all the efforts for mediocre results. Our prayer goes something like this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to go fishing today. We thank you for the car and for the boat and for all the fishing equipment. We thank you for this beautiful day and for all your abundant blessings on our lives. Lord, we pray that we can be a blessing on the earth in accordance with your promise to Abraham and that the people we meet today would be a blessing to us. Protect us on our way and get us to our fishing spot and back without any tickets, without any accidents, mechanical breakdowns or difficulties with local wildlife or law enforcement. Help us to find gas and bait and bathrooms when we need them. Yahweh God, you made the earth and everything in it, and you own the birds of the air and the fish of the seas. Lord, we pray that you would share your abundant fish with us today Help us bring home an ice chest full of fish. Often the children will add, add specific requests here. They'll raise their hand if they want to catch a certain kind or a certain size of fish. Give us a fun time, Lord, and help us to love you and to love each other, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope as a father is that God's demonstrated answers to my prayers in fishing and other areas of life and provision will help impart faith to my children as they see that the Creator who puts fish in the ice chest can meet every other need of the human heart as well. Please consider these scriptures and make it a point to pray not only to catch fish, but to catch men also, and to be a blessing on the earth, fulfilling God's promise to Abraham as you bring forth the light of the Messiah, not only in fishing, 